Hi guys, and in this tutorial we're going to be using Motion 5 to create a generator which can be used either within Motion or Final Cut Pro uh, of this type of head-up display. Uh, so this is the one that I used in my 3D hologram watch tutorials which can be found on my blog where we made uh, this type of um, gauge or display appear um, as if it's floating above uh, a watch face. And we did some motion tracking and everything for that. Um, so in those tutorials can be found on my blog, also here on my YouTube channel. So check those out. Um, and for those of you who just want to learn to create this type of head-up display, um, this is how it's done. Uh, also on my blog, you can download uh, a project file there, which I made in Motion, which has a bunch of different head-up displays that you can use, customize yourself. Um, but for those of you who want to make your own, this is basically uh, how I made it. Now, the, the frame rate here is a little bit slow because there's a lot going on on the screen uh, and I'm also doing the screen capture right now. But when you see the final one, it's a lot smoother than this. So uh, here's a demonstration of exactly what I was able to make um, out of this. You will, you will be able to do something like this type of effect. So we're going to be showing you not how to create this effect, that's, like I said, uh, you can find that in my other tutorials, but I'm gonna be showing you how we create this, this type of head-up display graphic here in Motion. So uh, we'll go over, we'll start a new Motion project, and uh, say eight seconds long, that's long enough, 29 frames per second, okay. So here's our Motion project. I'll just fit that in the view. So. We'll start off by drawing a circle. So we'll grab our shape tool down here and we want to go to circle and we'll open up our, our HUD and we want to turn the fill off. We want an outline. We'll make our outline this um, blue kind of color that I've already got saved here and a width of about six, say for now. Now hold down the shift key as we drag this. That'll keep it from a forming an ellipse. If we don't hold down shift, then this can go anywhere. So we hold down shift and we drag this out on our screen and then we'll go over to our inspector and properties and we'll just center this. So now our position is zero, zero. That's important because we're gonna be growing this out from the center. We're gonna be also centering other circles and by keeping this exactly in the middle, it allows us then gives us a reference point to join everything else up and align it so everything will all be kind of square. So. Uh, that's a little bit thick maybe on the line there, so we'll go over to our shape and um, on our width, let's make that say three wide instead, or we could even go a bit narrow and let's go to two. Okay, now we're gonna uh, duplicate this. Now I've got two of them and in our properties, we'll scale this down a little bit or you could go up if you wanna go outside. This, outside. So, there we go, that's probably just about right for us. Now I'm gonna change the um, pen stroke that is used on this. So this is this solid line here, it doesn't really give us this kind of hologram effect. Um, we want it to look like it's kind of light, like it's flickering a little bit. So I'll go over to our library and in our shape styles, um, if we come down to textual brushes, I found a brush which works pretty nice, it's called Sash. This is a standard brush, comes with motion. So I'll just drag this over and drop it onto our two circle shapes. Now, initially you won't see a huge change there. You'll see it becomes a little bit jittery. But you'll see what we can do in a moment with our inspector now, if you come over to the shape. And in our outline here now, our brush has changed. Um, now we want to alter these parameters here, the spacing and the width. So you'll see if I drag this spacing out, so the line gets thinner, it looks like it's made up of like a series of dots. It looks almost like it's kind of uh, being projected, like it's this hologram type effect. It looks much more believable than this solid line. So we drag that out, we get that. Uh, and then we can play around with the width also to get the type of style that we want. So probably a width of seven, so spacing is 63.5. And then uh, we'll want to do the same thing to this here. So a width of seven, spacing of 63.5. And there we go, that gives us kind of our hologram light kind of effect. And you can play around with these parameters to get the type of effect that you want. And the other thing that we may want to add to this also will be some glow. So um, 
we'll, we'll add that later. Uh, what we'll go on with now is uh, creating some more um, detail to this gauge. Uh, so we'll grab our circle tool again. Again, we'll open up our HUD and we'll change our outline this time to this orange color. Make our width down to say one. We'll drag that out again like that. And there we go. Close our HUD. And again, we center this. Now I want to move it up a little bit because I want this gauge to be up here. And then we'll go over to our shape again. And in our first and last point offset, I want to move these and you'll see what effect that has. Yeah. So let's uh, make this 50%. That will give us a, a semicircle, a half circle there. Um, let's just position that a bit lower down, maybe around here. Okay. It's looking pretty good. Now I want to add some um, dashes to this gauge. So I'm going to do that by using a replicator. So we'll grab, first of all, our um, line tool and we'll draw a line, hold down shift so it's dead straight, just a small line like that. Um, let's just drag this out of there, let's, uh, change this group, we'll call this group outer circles. Create a new group and we'll call this the gauge. And we'll drag both of those into that group, okay. Just keeps our project nice and tidy. So now we'll go to our line and we'll come down here to the replicator tool and you'll see now that that creates this, this square here but we're going to change that from a square so we'll change this to um, circle and instead of tile fill we go to outline that will then put our circle, that will then put these, these uh, dashes around the outline there so if we move this to the center here but you can see that they are not aligned uh, you know, they're, they're all still horizontal, they're not aligned with the with the curvature. So we'll come down here to, to align angle, and our align angle will be 90 degrees, and that will turn everything in here. And then if we up the number of points that we've got, you see we begin to get this gauge or dial type effect. So let's center that also in our screen. And there's our gauge. Now we want to align this up with the outline of our gauge. So again, we come over to our replicator and we'll play around with the radius and the number of points. We'll move it up. Okay, so we need to make our radius a little bit smaller. And we just want to basically align this up with the outline of our gauge here. So there, and let's drag it up a little bit again. Okay, that's about right. Um... Now the other thing you want to do then is you want to make this just half of the um, gauge. So we're just going to add a mask. So come down here to our masking tool and on our replicator here we'll drag a mask across and in our mask settings we change it to subtract. And that basically gives us our gauge. Now again to this we can add our sash brush. So we can drop it onto our various objects there. Now you'll see when you add it to this circle it comes back to, to a full circle. So, so we just have to um, change our point offset again back to 50 play around also then with our spacing and our width 
There we go. So here's the beginnings of our gauge um, and, and uh, what we can use on our head-up display. Uh, now let's say you want to have a ring of dots around here. So what I'll do is uh, I'll come back down to our outer circles and I'll get my circle tool again. Drag that out. Let's center it up. And let's scale it up to about there. Okay, now we come back over to our library and to our brushes. And let's go to abstract and dots. So what that will do now is it would, uh, if we drag that across and drop it onto the circle, you'll see now we get uh, a bunch of dots. And if we come over to our inspector, we can alter the spacing of these dots and the width of them. Just like that. So altering the spacing will alter the number of dots that we get. Okay. Now let's begin to animate this a little bit. So we'll come to our first frame and let's select our outer circle here. And in our last point offset, we'll set that down to zero, add a keyframe, then we'll come forward, say 10 frames and we'll drag that last point off offset back to 100. Now this circle here, the, the other one which is slightly inside, we're going to do a similar thing, but this time we're going to use the first point offset. So we'll drag that up to there, add a keyframe, I'm sorry, come back to frame one, add a keyframe, forward to frame 10, And we drag that back. So now if we review this. There's our animation of our circles coming in. Now let's go to frame 8. And at frame 8, I want to start these uh, dots drawing in. So let's grab the dots there. Come down to our last point offset. Drag it down to 0. Add a keyframe. Let's come forward to frame 15. And bring that back out there. So now let's play that from the beginning. There's our dial coming in. And then finally, we want to animate in our gauge. <coughs> so I'm going to alter, first of all, <coughs> the anchor point. <coughs> Excuse me. So we'll drag our anchor point out to this corner. And that means when we rotate this group, it'll rotate now around that pivot. So I want to rotate that down. And I want to scale the whole group. And I'm going to move it. Down here. Get it down to zero. Okay. And we'll add a keyframe for the scale. We add a keyframe for the rotation and a keyframe for the position. We'll come forward then to frame 30. And in frame 30, our scale will already be 100%. Our rotation will be back to zero, and our position will be there. So 
So there you have it. That's basically the beginnings of how we start to create this um, gauge. Um, in part two, we'll be developing this more. We'll begin to animate some randomness to the uh, needle and the indicators and everything. So thanks for tuning in, and I'll see you in part two of this tutorial series.